In our previous video, we have discussed about the analogous truss of a reinforced concrete beam subjected to the shear load, which comprise of the concrete, steel, and also vertical limb. The concrete here is meant to undertake the compressive force acting within the member and the regions of concrete undergo compressions include the top part of the beam and also the diagonal strut of the beam and it is mentioned that in the analysis of the truss here we need to consider the compressive strength of the concrete and its angle as there is a limit to the compressive strength of the concrete it is essential to ensure the concrete is to be designed not reaching the crushing strength. Therefore, the maximum shear resistance of the member need to be smaller than the ultimate crushing strength of the concrete. The ultimate crushing strength of the concrete is represented by the symbol FCU which is calculated by multiplying the ultimate concrete stress with the effective cross-sectional area of the strut. The ultimate concrete stress is determined by the characteristic strength of the concrete, which is the cylinder strength or the concrete grade, divided by the partial factor of safety of the concrete, which is equal to 1.5. As for the effective cross-sectional area of the struts, it is determined by B multiply Z cos theta. The theta here represents the angle of the strut. And Z cos theta is actually referring to this width, Z cos theta. This is calculated on basis of the effective height here which is equivalent to the Z here between the top and bottom reinforcement bar. Assuming the Z here is equal to 0.9D, this height here will be equal to 0.9D. The angle here is theta which will give you the same angle here. To determine this distance, it is by multiplying the z with the cos theta. Therefore, technically, the effective cross-sectional area is referring to the diagonal concrete member here. Based on the principles of trigonometry, the ultimate force in the strut here can be represented in the functions of the shear load divided by sine theta. The vertical force for the shear loads behave in the vertical manner by dividing this vertical shear load with the sine theta we will obtain the FCU. Assuming that the shear resistance will be the same as the shear load. This equation is produced. The shear resistance of the member is in the functions of SCU times sine theta. These equations have already been explained in the previous slide here. Combine all the respective equations, you will obtain this. Going through a process of trigonometry conversions, this equation is produced. In Eurocode 2, a factor of V1 is added to the equations. This gives to a new equation here, where the factor V1 is determined in the functions of SCK. The Z here is taken as 0.9D. Substitute both equation into these equations, you will obtain a new equation like this. 
It is defined by Eurocode that the angle will range between 22 degree to 45 degree. Substituting the theta equals to 22 degree, you obtain these equations, and 45 degree, you obtain these equations. These two equations will later be used to estimate the positions of the angle of the sections. It shall be discussed in detail in the later slides. And from the equation here, going through a process of trigonometry conversions, the equations can be rearranged in the functions of the VED to determine the exact angles of the shear members. These equations will help us to determine the angle of the shear in the member. There are three equations that you need to memorize. The first one is this, the second one is this, and the third one is this. The applications of these equations will be discussed in the following videos.